Hi, Dr. Q. Thanks for being on the show. Hello, Leah. Namaste, and thank you for having me. Yes, and so you're coming to us live from Budapest. Is that correct? Indeed, yes. I now live in Budapest, capital city of Hungary. That's awesome. Well, you have a very interesting history yourself, and today is going to be a loaded podcast because I'm super excited to tell about my experience with one of your services, which is the Indian palm leaf reading that I recently had that mm-hmm. you help facilitate through your organization. So there's a Thank lot you. to cover, and I'm excited about it all because it's fascinating. It's fascinating. The whole thing is. is fascinating. It is. I know. It's actually mind blowing. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here talking to you about it. Yes. Yeah. So um, I met you through, we have mutual uh, circles, you know, in our, in our worlds and you were introduced to me probably by a publicist or someone. Anyway, you lead the Institute for Indian palm leaf readings in America. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's my own reading that got me to do this. Your own reading. So before we go much further, because someone listening to this or looking at the title might go, What is an Indian palm leaf reading? Because so many people have heard of tea leaf readings and palm readings and, you know, different things. This is something completely different. So why don't you tell us what a palm leaf reading is? Sure. It's something completely different. And uh, for the most part, it's still a secret in the West, but it's something that comes from Southern India, the southernmost state in India called Tamil Nadu. has about 85 million people that speak Tamil. So to my California friends out there, it's twice the size of the one state called California. So it gives you an idea about how big that state is. And those people are called Tamils and they speak the Tamil language. Legend has it that about 3000 years ago, so-called Maharishis, Maha means great, Rishi means sage, so great sages, wrote on dried palm leaves messages for people to then be read to them whenever they're supposed to get a reading sometime in the future. Now, the reason why I call it the Indian Palm Leaf Reading Institute is to make sure that people have at least some sort of an idea of what it is, because no Indian would call it an Indian Palm Leaf Reading. I call it the Indian Palm Leaf Reading because uh, it's from India. It's written on palm leaves, dried palm leaves, and there is a message that is read to you, hence Indian palm leaf reading. But in India, we will call it Nadi reading or Nadi astrology or Jyotish. Nadi, so that you also know, means a seeker, means palm leaf, but it also means, for example, the pulse, you know, pulse of a human being. So we come full circle. Hence, they call it Nadi reading or Nadi astrology. Astrology, because part of it, a tiny fraction of it, is connected to uh, Vedic astrology. That's Indian astrology. So that's in a nutshell why I call it in a palm of reading versus Nadi reading or Nadi astrology. Okay, so um, thank you for sharing that. And there's so much more for people to know. It, you know, when I when I do any of the this kind of thing, readings or even just in my interviews, you know, I try mm-hmm. to take both perspectives, you know, not necessarily yeah. devil's advocate and not necessarily just pro, 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 you know, just sure, one-sided, but both sides of it. And what was interesting to me in, in this reading that was different than astrology that I've had in the past, even Vedic astrology, is that the only required information was a thumbprint. Correct. So you, do, you give a thumbprint and your gender. Correct. And, and that's your country it. birth. Yes. So thank you for that question, because um, I can dive into it a little bit more. First of all, to the audience who gets to see our video, I brought, I brought this little picture with me, 18 Maharishis in the southern parts of India. The guy in the middle, that's also the person who wrote your palm leaf, Leah. His name is Maharishi Agastya, but there are 17 others. And uh, these, they wrote these palm leaves, not themselves, but they meditated through to Lord Shiva or uh, his wife Parvati or Vishnu or, you know, uh, whatever God. And they were given the power of foresight. And then they were dictating those leaves, those messages to their disciples who then wrote them onto dried palm leaves. Why dried palm leaves? Because in the old, you know, 3000 years ago, there were no books. So somehow they needed to figure out how to capture and preserve information. And they used dried palm leaves, not just for Nadi astrology, but for everything, medicine, Ayurvedic, um, Ayurvedic medicine, for example, legal text, history, whatever, you name it. And uh, these leaves were then cut 
into sections of, um, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 inches and about an inch or so wide. And then they were still fresh and they used special tools and they were etching the information on it. And then when it dried up, the information came through. And the only way really to preserve them as best as possible, because we're talking a dried palm leaf, which is very brittle and hence it will crack and disintegrate at some point. They put them together into bundles, also known as books. And I brought for the audience so you can see the video, one of those bundles with me. And in this bundle or book, we have individual dried palm leaves with messages written for people. Now, since you mentioned thumbprint, these bundles are stored in archives and libraries. And when you hear the word archive or library, you think of temperature controlled security guards, you know, water dispenser and this and the other. It's actually the opposite. So for those of you who have not been to India yet, India is very chaotic and it's quite not the way that uh, the Western countries run. So these archives, and I just opened up the bundle for you so you could see these individual dried palm leaves in them. That's by the way, just the mock-up. Um, so, cause I go to many shows and otherwise people might just touch them and it would just dis uh, disintegrate. These bundles are stored in sometimes private, actually for the most part, private archives. When I say private archive, these are more or less holes in a wall, really like a back room somewhere. And that is owned by a reader family because um, the knowledge, wisdom is passed on from grandfather, father, son, grandson, and so forth, for the most part. As an outsider, you may join and become a reader too. By the way, a reader is a person who can find a bundle for you, identify your leaf, and then read the leaf to you. And that process in itself takes five to seven years. It's quite a lengthy process. And a tiny fraction of their five, seven year long um, training is to learn Vedic astrology. So all of Vedic astrology is just one tiny fraction of what a reader needs to know. Reason being, they use symbols on these leaves that refer to planets and their constellations. So they need to know exactly how to identify them, read them, and then connect them with the seeker. So these bu uh, bundles are stored in God knows how many, I'm just guesstimating here, maybe a thousand. I don't know, because nobody really knows it's India. There is no... Mm, there is no uh, computer system behind it that tells you exactly where things are. It's just by word of mouth and randomness, really. But somehow it works. So uh, an archive could have 200, 300 bundles, or it could have 10,000 bundles, depending on how big it is and, and what is private or run by the state or so. Now, the only way for a reader to find a bundle which hopefully contains the seeker's individual palm leaf is to get that person's thumbprint. Because through the thumbprint, you can then identify the person's thumbprint category or thumbprint name. There are 108, 108 is a holy number in Hinduism, 108 different thumbprint categories. It would literally take a, a magnifying glass, look at your thumbprint, identify your thumbprint name. That's one step. Then he would need to know your gender because ladies would submit their left thumbprint and gents would submit their right thumbprint and your country of birth, because that's how they're stored in these little archives. So female versus male, uh, country, you know, the region, and uh, also by the Maharishi. So Agastya would have his own section versus the 17 others also. And then he will go into these archives and look for bundles that have a matching thumbprint category name. And that would be either through a number on the top. I can show you Leo here, the, it has the number 22. 22 means a specific thumbprint category name. If he finds one of those after knowing your thumbprint name, because you know we just had a reading of, uh, recently, he then would pull it out, say, cool, I found one or two or three. And then he will come back to the office. Now this, that's the search part, because the whole thing is a three-step system. Search, matching, and reading. The search part, is a physical act. There are no computers involved. There are no registries involved. There's no book, none of that. It's more or less randomness, I guess. And it's also physical act, meaning the reader wants to know your thumbprint name, hops on his bicycle, believe it or not, or his moped, or uses you know, the public bus and then goes from one archive to the next to the next to the next in order to find a, a bundle that matches your thumbprint name. Once he finds one, I mean, if you're lucky, he has one himself because usually a reader owns a few hundreds of bundles as well. And then he would say, Leah, oh, well, in your case, he would know your name, but he will call you and say, yeah, we found your bundle, come over. We will come over and that's the search part. So search parts come to an end. He found a bundle or two and then the matching and the reading will start. 
matching and reading are in person usually. If you lived in India, you would sit across the reader in his office. And office is also a little exaggerated because it's more or less a hole in the wall. So we'll sit across from him and then the matching will start and then he will give you the reading. Now, what does matching mean? Matching means he will open up the bundle in front of you, as you might remember, and then he would look at the leaf and whatever information catches his eye as being the most important information on that leaf, he will read out to you. These are statements, not questions, statements. For example, you are married because that leaf belongs to a person who's married. And if the person is married, he or she will say yes. And if you're not married, you just say no. So the only answers you need to give are yes and no, right, wrong, correct, incorrect answers. That's it. And for as long as you say yes to a statement, he stays on that leaf and goes deeper and deeper and deeper. If you say no, then that's not your leaf. It would move on to the next leaf until ultimately, as it was in your case and in my case too, seven, eight years ago, you only say yes, 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 yes. And at the very end, he will then tell you to verify that this is your leaf. And again, very important to know, you know, I know, but the audience doesn't know. The reader does not know anything about you, really. He only knows your thumbprint name, your gender, and your country of birth. He then will read out to you your name, first name that is, your mother's name, father's name, date of birth, time of birth, uh, weekday of birth, your spouse if you have a spouse, your ex-spouse if you have a spouse. Some people have several ex-spouses, so it could happen that they tell you all your ex-spouses too, just to verify kids, how many you have, gender, siblings, and so forth. That's called matching. That was the wow part. I was like, I, I, I couldn't believe it when it happened to me because I do have a very varied... Um, upbringing and their unusual name, and yet they identified me. So that's called matching. Now, there is a lot behind the matching because it's not as simple as a person might think it is. The leaf doesn't say this leaf belongs to Leah. That would be awesome, but that doesn't work, regrettably, not that way. First of all, the leaves are written in ancient Tamil, doesn't exist anymore. Today, people speak modern Tamil, which means Whoever wants to be able to read ancient Tamil needs to study it, similar to ancient Greek versus modern Greek. Then the leaves are written in a poetic form, like a poem, not in simple sentences. And last but not least, which makes it really difficult, it's written in symbols only. So he needs to be able to identify what the symbol means, the symbol means, and then take it the right direction to then uh, find your specific one. And last but not least, Tamil and also ancient Tamil are sound-based languages, syllabic languages, uh, unlike all Western languages that are letter-based, A, B, C, D. To make it a little more graphic and understandable, one symbol in Tamil means either A, E, I, O, or U. That makes it quite difficult. So he needs to, when he looks at the leaf, in order to know which direction to take the leaf, he would need to read out to you and say your name, your first name, only first name, by the way, no middle name, no nickname, no last name, contains, in our case, let's say A, E, I, or O, or U. And if one of those five is in your first name, you will say yes. And if it's not, you will say no. So that's a very complex, time-consuming process. And through the process of elimination, eventually, hopefully, there is a match. And that's the end of step two. And then would be the reading part, which we will talk, I guess, um, in a minute or two. Yes. Well, thank you for all that. And for You're people welcome. listening, that's a little overwhelming because it's so much information. So we need to stop and slow down and, and break this down because I want people to understand what it's like for them to get a reading. And so sure. you shared the process of, um, you know, what actually happens behind the scenes. So yes. as I said, in, in this case, because we're doing it virtually through your Institute, yes. we're submitting a thumbprint. And then that thumbprint yes. goes directly to them with no other information besides None. the sex Different and the print. country of origin. Correct. Yes. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then they take it and they go search for the bundle, which, as you described, were in all of these different places, uh, hidden holes, rooms, Correct. Correct. et cetera. Yes. <laughs> okay. yes. And then they come back and then you go through this matching process where, where they will try to identify you and your particular leaf 
in the bundles, according to various questions, which we'll talk about in just a minute, the mm -hmm. questions that come up for me, and I, I yep. would assume probably for the reader too, is you describe that these um, palm leaves are stored in bundles, I guess mm -hmm. one to help preserve them, but even still stored in bundles, how could they last thousands of years where someone could still read, you know, whatever kind of ink that was etched into a palm leaf, why wouldn't it disintegrate or at least I mean, I have receipts, you know, that are, that have yeah, I know, with, I know the, with and thumbprints the and so forth. So, and, uh, yeah, um, yeah well, so how does that work? Well, there is no ink involved at all. It's a very sharp tool, fresh leaf, and they etch like the juicy part out. And when it dries, the message shows. So there is no mm -hmm. ink involved. That's one. Two, a, an individual leaf can survive a few hundred years, you know, two, three, four hundred years maybe. And then it disintegrates. It's just the way it is. So what has happened over the past several thousand years is readers, priests, just like monks in Europe, sat down and copied them over to preserve them ah. throughout the millennia. Yes, correct. So we don't okay. have a leaf that's 3,000 years old. That just doesn't happen. So we have leaves that are a few hundred years old. Absolutely. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so for a person listening that's thinking, I wonder if my leaf is there. Now, there's billions of people and... Mm -hmm. Over the thousand years, I, I can't even calculate how many billions of people have been alive. Sure. Yes. So a is lot. there an individual leaf for every single person that has been alive or no. how, how does that go? No. It's, it's a phenomenal. It's a fantastic question because, of course, I've been thinking about this myself and had many, many discussions with many different readers. I came up with my own spiritual answer, if I may share that. Having gone through terrible times when it comes to health, really, more than most people. Um, in one of those times when I was sitting and lying in, in hospital, I somehow realized that time, the way we perceive it as humans, past, current, and future, does, isn't really time. I came to understand that possibly everything happens at the same time, only we don't have the capacity of understanding that. So I think, and, and the readers say, yeah, that's, that's a possibility. I think the moment, the moment that you, I, whoever thinks, oh, I wanna have a reading, I need direction in my life, or I need some healing, I need some answers, it's a thought. And you, when you have the thought, you then, uh, the, the next step will be uh, an action step, and that would be submitting your thumbprint. So you do something, thoughts, you create something, you put your thumbprint down and you turn this into a reality. At the same time, 3000 years ago, the Maharishi knows that Leah today needs to get some direction or healing or answers to certain questions. So he then starts writing or dictating your leaf. So that 3000 years later, when uh, the reader goes on a search, he then finds bundles that will contain your individual palm leaf. That is how I think it all happens. Well, it's, it is really fascinating. And, I and I can understand why there are a lot of skeptics, not just because it sounds, um, you know, it sounds impossible, but just like with every industry from religion to bankers, to uh, spiritual leaders, to parents to everyone, I'm sure that there are people doing this kind of practice in India that maybe aren't of the most upright, um, you know, integrity, right? Oh, I mean, absolutely. You can, you can name it as the fake. There's a lot of fake stuff going on in India, a lot. Yeah. Um, right. I, I know that. Uh, and um, so, and that's the same for everything, you know, for though, everything so we don't want to yes, just, yes, yeah. yeah for right. everything. Well, absolutely. so I want to, I want to tell people a little bit about what I experienced just because I know that they're curious and, sure. um, and then, you know, we can talk about what you experienced. So for me, it, it did happen. And I, in, in the reading the reviews, I came to learn that it happened this way for almost everyone, meaning mm -hmm you have your appointment for the matching and the reading, and it took about 45 minutes for them to go through the series of questions and looking through the bundles to find my leaf. It seems to be most, most people, and you've done a lot of these readings, but it seems to be uh, most people go through 30 to 45 minutes to an hour of being yeah. questioned. Is that true? Yeah. Today, I just finished the reading 20 minutes ago. And um, when I sent you the email, like an hour ago, maybe it was 25 minutes. Boom. Like super fast. Okay. 
So sometimes it takes an, and sometimes it takes an hour and 15 minutes, you know, so it depends on if it's just two bundles they find or three bundles and it depends on how complex your life situation is or how simple it is. Um, it, it's not, you know, and, and they're more common thumbprint names and they're less common thumbprint names. Um, I see. And is it written by Agastya Maharishi or is it written by different Maharishi? So it's, uh, you can't really uh, say how long it will take, but yeah, you know, roughly 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, that's how, okay. how it usually takes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so then the interpreter and the reader and uh, Dr. Q moderated for me and you always mm -hmm. have a moderator through your platform. Yes, you. yes. Mm -hmm. um, so then they, they ask this, the questions as you suggested, you know, different um, syllables, letters in my name or where I'm from, you know, different questions that I had to answer yes or no to. And yes. several times I thought we were getting close, but then they ask a question that had no relevance to me at all. So yes. I said, no, then they, they go to the next leaf and kind of start over They're Then yes. asking yes. a lot of the same questions. Right. Yes. And then all of a sudden about 45 minutes in, they said, is your mother's name Cheryl? Is your father's name Charles? Is your name Leah? Were you born this date? So they got it and they said, we have found your leaf. And when that happens, you, you kind of feel like the only shining star in the world, right? It's like, absolutely. oh my I God. Remember, <laughs> I know, absolutely. It's, it's huge. It's huge. I remember my, my own meeting. It was overwhelming. Absolutely. Yes. Don't forget, they said, your father has a king's name. Remember? Yes. They said, your father's king's name, leader's name. He said, yeah, that's true. Um, so it, it's, they just know, like, it's, it's quite, quite amazing. Mm -hmm. Yes. I so, know. so they determined they had my leaf and of course I'm excited and overwhelmed and, you know, we take a little break now for the skeptic that's listening to this. And there's a lot of skeptics about reading in general. One, they of call course. people gullible, you know, you call them seekers. Other people would call them gullible or desperate or would believe anything that you're told or, um, you know, you're praying to the wrong source, or this is somehow anti-Christian or anti-spiritual or, or whatever there, I've heard it all. Yeah. yeah. But there's something to be said about, you know, the fact, I mean, unless there was a way that I'm unaware of that my information could have gotten to these people, you know, where they could do a background check and can they take a thumbprint and do a police check or a background check? I mean, is there any way for I them to I love the have question. any other information? Uh, and my counter question is, do you think the money that people pay is worth me spending a minute, a second on the person? finding out anything about the person. I really- No, I but I'm thinking I'm thinking for the skeptic because the skeptic, whether they're in India sure. or doing something like this sure. would say, well, maybe they were able to go on, you know, sure. a background check or sure. maybe they have a yearly service that they don't have to, you know, go on. Who knows? This is the sure. way people think though, right? Sure. You know? And my so, standard answer is don't do it. If you're yeah, skeptical- Then that's not for you. It. It's not for you. That's it. I'm period. Either you trust yeah. in the system and you trust in, in my integrity and the integrity of my readers. Beautiful. Then you will have a phenomenal experience and you will know intuitively if it's right or not. You, right. I mean, we're, we're not idiots. You know, you, you, you can tell, are these people well, that talk to me with integrity and, and what they tell me, does it make sense? Or is it just some blah, blah they, they come up with? So if you are skeptical, then don't do it. And also, because uh, I'm an, I would say a very ethical human being, if somebody's unhappy after the reading, I would just refund their money. That's just the way it is. You know, it's, I'm not here to fight over a couple hundred bucks. Uh, if I wanted to make money, I would not be doing this. I, I, you can message right. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i always say in my work like, when people are like oh, yeah you know, yeah there's uh, if, a lot if, of other if, ways if you have issues then you go with god there's your money back and and and, and i'll pay it because my everyone on my team still gets paid so i put, put it on my pocket so it's not that i will tell the reader sorry this person doesn't believe in it so i'm going to take the money back from you i'm going to give it. no they get paid no matter what so it's come out, comes out of my pocket because i believe in what i do period that's just the way it is and right. I, have one, I have one guideline in my, in my life, so that you understand too, uh, having come from a very diverse background. My dad's Baha'i, not that I'm into religion at all, I really am not, but um, he gave me one thing in life. And we grew up very wealthy, like super wealthy, Persian wealthy, you know? Um, and we lost everything in 1979. There was a revolution, we had to flee, otherwise they would have killed us, period. It's, it's just how it was. 
And he said, son, you know what? There's only one thing in life that you have and that's your good name. Don't screw it up. That's all there is. You know, um, money mm. comes, money goes, um, you know, be sick, you, know, you might die early or, you know, things happen in your life. But throughout all of that, there's only one thing you, you have and that's your good name. Just make sure that you maintain it at all costs. You know, so be, be as ethical as you possibly can be, be honest, truthful yes. and do uh, like help people and the rest just will resolve itself. So, and, and, and I'm doing this not because I'm, I'm into the big bucks because there is no big bucks in this at all, but it helps my Indians. It's a calling. Um, we can get into that too, because in my own reading, I was told it's my last life. And as a last lifer, you have special duties. You got to give back to humanity, you give right. back to society. And, and so, so and I wanna, uh, when I started this, I, I promised my Indians, I said, look, I know you make very little money in what you do. So when I, when we get it done and bring it to the West, you get paid a lot more than what you would get from an Indian customer, like in India itself, then uh, you can at least have a better life and be able to support your families and continue with what you do because it's a calling for them too. It's not that they, right. you know, it's the only thing that they need to do. Like your reader, he's a, he's, he has a master's in engineering. So he's not an educa uneducated man. He's an educated man, but he chose to be in the healing world and, and, and help others. So, yeah. Right. So, well, thank you for that. And so there's the integrity piece. Um, other people that I've had feedback from, not just with this kind of reading, but in, with readings and divination in general, mm -hmm. you know, there's people that are really scared to know what's coming. You know, they'd be mm -hmm. scared to know when they're going to get sick or hurt or die if they're a partner, sure. you know, they're scared to know sure. what's of coming. Course. So course. one thing I liked about, um, you know, the setup, I'll say, when when we were talking about doing this and you were telling me about the work that you guys do is that it's about helping a person to have a better life trajectory, to correct. be prepared and to correct. know, right? Yes, correct. So in my world too, in the healing world, you know, and um, in the intuitive world and, and well, just in my world in general, I regularly, especially when I had a store, I would regularly get clients telling me about this reading that they had, or this person that told them that they were under a spell and needed this candle and had to do X, Y, and Z, you know, kind of like this black magic approach yes. and they were filled with fear. And I would always tell them, you know, if you're filled with fear after talking to anyone, that's not your person, right? That's not he healing, helpful. Correct. That's manipulation and, um, you know, of the darkness. And so that was, again, what I really appreciated with this work is that, yeah, there were some things, you know, that, that it wasn't delivered scarily, but, you know, there's some just basic information about, parents' health or what have you that, you know, okay, now I know and kind of can prepare for that, but it doesn't, it didn't, you know, there's no fear involved. There's no, you must do this or your shouldn't life's going to burn. Correct. Down. There shouldn't be at all. Right. Like in, in one sentence, because we talked before we started the show, uh, what's in it for the audience? It's very simple. What was it in it, in it for me when I got the reading done? And don't forget, you know, I was just like you, a seeker too. I just uh, had just survived a major, major heart issue. I came out of the ICU. So my, my biggest struggle is health, really. So all I wanted is to figure out some ways to not having to end up in hospital again. And um, in one sentence, a reading helps you create a better trajectory for yourself after the reading. Because the reading gives you the good, the bad, and the ugly. All of it, of course, because life is not just milk and honey, period. I mean, we're all, we've all lived for X amount of years, and we've realized that there, is, there are challenges, period. It's just the way it is. And we have to overcome challenges constantly in, in different aspects of life, relationship challenges and health challenges and money and career and job and the whole nine yards. And in between, we have sunny spells, you know, we, we just cruise and then the next challenge comes and that's just the way it is. So um, all the reading does is you know, uh, the, the reading looks into the future based on your energies at the time of the reading and uh, Vedic astrology and your thumbprint name. And it gives you a possible trajectory into the future. But life is not a flat line. As we know, it's way too complex for that. It's not but it's a possible trajectory based on the day of your reading. And when you look into the future, they will tell you there are sunny spells, meaning you better utilize those sunny spells because it's a good time to write a book or to move or you know something, whatever, change careers, you name it. 
uh, get yourself sunglasses so you can enjoy the sun, you know, put some sun lotion on. And also at the same time, they will tell you, well, these are challenging times coming up for whatever reason, health issues, relationship issues, career issues, money issues. So, you know, if you continued, if life were a straight line, which it is not, then this is what you can expect down the line. A very graphic hands-on experience that I had myself just a couple of years ago with a younger gentleman, it was maybe 25 or so, 27, 28, a younger gentleman. He was a smoker, which I did not know because I did not know anything about a person that comes against a reading from us. Uh, the reader just, you know, goes through the reading and then it says in 57, 57 59 or so, you will have uh, cancer and die. That's it, you know? And this guy looked at me, looked at, uh, and it's lung cancer, just specifically lung cancer, not just cancer. And then the guy says, oh my gosh, I'm a smoker. So uh, I said, well, he told you now, 30 years ahead of time, that if life were a straight line and you continue doing what, what you're doing, smoking cigarettes, then there's a big likelihood of you dying of lung cancer. So you have the option now, because you've got free will and choice. It's up to you. You know, nobody's here with a gun against you for it saying you must. Nobody does that. But we tell you, if you want to live past 57, 59, well, then you're going to change something, which means in this particular case, stop smoking. That's it. You know what I mean? So we have the power. We, give, we show the water. And we, it's up to us to do it, to do whatever we need right. to do. Yeah. Okay. So this is a great uh, point of conversation. And mm -hmm. so seeing as life is not linear and as you just described how we can positively affect, for example, they said for me, um, I forget at what age, but um, a danger period in my seventies related to old age or something and, and some vein issues at some point. Okay. Sure. So maybe I could, you know, start taking cardiovascular stuff and up my herbs and more walking and all that kind That's of thing, what they suggested. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And create a better trajectory where that would not happen. Can we also, you know, change it the other way? Meaning if I started drinking every night of and course. right, of course, of course, right. Of course. So then a person might say, well, what's the use of the reading? And because we do have so much free will and because things change sometimes outside of our control is the, is the reading, the trajectory, the possible trajectory accounting for other things outside of our control, just not what's in our control, right? Because we could make it go one way or the other, but it's basically saying, well, it didn't say this for me, but maybe for some people, you know, you might have an accident at this point or mm -hmm. you're going to meet Let's your see, spouse. Yeah, be, careful, or yeah, be careful. Don't travel in this period. Uh -huh. That's what they would say. Travel means now that would be outside yourself. information that we can't control. That's different than control, like health correct. or relationship. Correct. Right. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. Now, again, it's, it, it accounts for star constellation karma that you carry with you. And the energies that you have at the time of the reading, which I'm you know, looking in the future, if it were linear, which is not, this could happen given today's point of view. Now, the whole purpose of a reading is to overcome those challenges. Of course, that's all for meaning you create a better life trajectory for yourself. Now, the moment you start with your homework called pujas, called remedies, which we will need to talk about too, mm -hmm. you start changing the energies. And by changing the energies, you start attracting different energies and a different reality. That means that hopefully that will never happen. Like in my own reading, they told me 77 to 79, I'll have a heart attack and die. I accepted that because my heart is weak. I was in the ICU because of heart issues. The cancer therapy uh, destroyed a little bit of my heart too. So if somebody tells me you have a heart attack, it makes sense to me. And this guy does not know anything about me. You know, you need to know that. This is mind blowing. This guy mm -hmm. tells me you will have a heart attack right. and die. 77, 79. I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy, you know? Uh, but he said, you can do pujas and you can do uh, energy shifting exercises and uh, you can go past 79 by changing the energies that you have. And I had a second reading um, four years ago, maybe or so. And in my second reading, the two readers are not connected at all. Not, not connected at all, but the, I'm still the same person. So I know that both readers are authentic human beings. Uh, it was just better because the second reader said, oh, you have the gift of longevity, which means it cannot determine the, the two, three years, um, the, the bracket where, where you pass on. He said, oh, I can see 82. And then who knows, it could be 82 plus one day, or it could be 99 because you got the gift of longevity. So the work that, that I have done, I chose to the pujas, I chose to, to lead a healthy lifestyle. Um, and um, it already had an impact on my reading, on my second reading, which was three or four years after my first reading. Yes. Mm -hmm.
It's so choice. speaking of this, yeah. So speaking of this death date, I, I've been watching Manifest. So it's funny you said callings and now I'm saying death date. I don't know if you've watched Manifest or not that show. Anyway, um, the death date. So, you know, a lot of people in particular, I think from the, you know, God believing, God fearing kind of background, people would say it is of the devil or it is not, you know, no one can predict your death date. How It's impossible for someone to predict your death date. And so here, how would we? Of course, it's not. Well, it's very of utmost importance to maybe convey this information uh, in, in very simple, straightforward uh, words. Your life is not set in stone, period, period. No matter what, what a right. person says, your life is not set in stone. Hence, it's also not pre-written on a, on a uh, dried palm leaf. It's not. But what it is, it, it gives you a trajectory based on the day you get the reading. Now, it mm -hmm. could say, oh, you will have, you will be a millionaire. I don't know. I'm just making this up now. And yet you could still the next day decide, you know, screw all that. I'm going to jump out of the window. That's it. Because you did it yourself. Because there, again, there is no one with a gun against you for it saying you must do this and you must not do that. So you've got free will, but it gives you a, uh, it's like a, a railing. It's like a, a, a support. It's like a wingman, wingwoman who says, look, this is a likely scenario in the future given today's point of view now what you do with that information is up to you because you've got free will and choice very important and the only person and i'm a thousand percent convinced of that despite the fact that i went through a revolution being shot at and had nothing to do with me is much bigger than you know we are and i had cancer in chernobyl burst and got me cancer you know it's much bigger than i am so i'm a victim i got raped if you wish by history or or um, circumstances. Um, and yet I do believe that the reality we, cre we experience is created here through our own thoughts, our own actions or not actions, because if I don't do something, still something's going to happen, you know, um, and, uh, and how we deal with what happens to us. Now, of yes. course, you can just give up and say, oh, you know, I'm a victim, I, you know, revolution took all my money. So you just you know, roll over and, and wait to right. pass on, right. or you, 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 you do something about it and, uh, and uh, and make the best of it, and I'm a believer of that. I really, really am. I really am 100. Yeah. percent So take the reading. Yeah, as I'm right there with you. The winner. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I think that's great. And you know, if, again, so for my reading, we started the reading. They came with my parents' name, my name, my date of birth. They didn't say the time. They said the general time, and you know, the day and all that. Um, but like for example, they told me then some basic. Um, gemstones that are good for me lucky yeah. days of the week lucky days of the month um uh, then they went into basically every two years of you know the timeline as you said so every couple of years mm -hmm. they'll kind of give you a synopsis of what you can expect with yourself or with your siblings or parents if they're still alive your relationship mm -hmm. Um, and good times to do certain things, as you said. So, you know, for me, I think the first seven months, they said confusion, there was still some confusion, which I tend to take as could be anything from, you know, this was written a long time ago, right? So what could confusion mean? It could mean anxiety. It could mean I've been having vertigo. It could mean yes. insomnia. It could mean Correct. anything that would yes. imbalance the brain Correct. space, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Correct. So they, they said that for a few months, but then it would resolve at this kind of time. And then, you know, the next chunk of time, I'd be not only much clearer, but things would start to align for relationship and my work and so forth. So they, they really do take you through, um, I would say it's, you know, well, as far as detail going throughout every couple of years through the rest of your potential life, you know, is pretty detailed, <laughs> um, even pretty telling you when you're siblings and parents and so forth may get sick or, um, you know, have difficulties. Now you mentioned the pujas, which I did get some pujas and yeah. the pujas are about, um, for me, they were, they're going to be, I don't have the list yet, but they're going to be mantras and prayers, um, chanting or, you know, different activities like that. Sometimes, is there public service or community things to do or yes. what, what could yeah. pujas every, be? Every, every person gets their own specific pujas. Now in general, puja means either prayer ceremony, literally translated prayer ceremony or ceremonial act. So a physical act you need to do. 
but in Western terminology, it means energy shifting exercise. That's what it is. So if something goes well in your life, then obviously the energies are good. You know, they're, they're in flow. And if something is not going well, then, you know, the, there is blocked energy. So these exercises help you to overcome them, change it, and then you attract the, the, the trajectory that you want. Now, it could be either a mantra. And again, this is not a religious act either. You need to know that too. So we have Muslim seekers and Christian and Catholics and Jewish, so that makes no difference. Uh, you just need to look at a reading through a, a historical glasses because 3,000 years ago, these Maharishis only knew of Hinduism, really. That's, that's the reason why they meditated to Hindu gods. Because remember, we're talking southern India. At the time, there was no India, by the way, because uh, way before India became India. And southern India is the original India. Every southern Indian is happy to say it too, because the rest came later. So they obviously meditated to things they knew. And hence, they meditated to gods of, uh, uh, within Hinduism. But it's not a religious act at all. It just helps you to focus your energies. And in Hinduism, each god represents... Uh, an intention or, or something they stand for. So when you are given Ganesha, for example, to meditate six Sundays in a row to Ganesha, that means he is here. His job is a block remover. So I always tell people, imagine him to be like a bulldozer uh, going ahead of you and then removing all the obstacles and blocks. And then you show up. So it's an easier walk for you when you have to uh, um, find your own path. Or uh, Durga, goddess Durga, she's a warrior. You know, she's a fighter. So her job is here to be your wing woman. So she is uh, getting rid of negativity, jealousy, competition. So you got to have the intention when you do these mantras, not focusing on the mantra and correct pronunciation because that's a waste of your time and energy. Just focus on the intention. So if you have goddess door guy, picture her as your wing woman fighting and fending off all the negativity in your life. And that is here to help you to overcome uh, certain obstacles uh, um, identified in your reading. And then it could also be a physical act, as you asked me, is it also something physical? Absolutely. It could, it could be, not in your case, I don't remember that you were given a, a physical act, but I had to do physical acts. Uh, it was on two Wednesdays, I had to give food to the needy. That's what my reader told me, give food to the needy. I said, man, what do you, what do you mean by give food to the needy? Should I have a soup kitchen, donate money? He said, you will figure it out. Man, I was sweating because I had no idea what to do. And I had just moved to Budapest. I don't speak the language. I don't know anyone here. And then ding, it just uh, dawned on me the day before. Because uh, uh, you need to know too, if you break the cycle, you have to start from, the, from scratch again. And I didn't want to break the cycle. And then it just came to me. I said, you know what? I'm just going to invite an elderly lady that I had seen in a cafe that I used to go to, who I thought didn't have enough money. So I just paid for her lunch without letting her know that it's from me. That was the most beautiful experience, um, really. It, was, it gave me chills. Because when I saw her looking and trying to figure out who paid for her lunch, it was not much a soup, a sandwich. I don't remember. It's a long time ago. But I've been doing it ever since. Ever since. So randomly, I just pay a person a coffee. And it's just beautiful. Audience out there, you can do it too. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful for yourself. And another one was um, on five Fridays, give fruit and candy to at least five children. Now, again, I'm a middle-aged white guy. Imagine me in a foreign country going to random five kids and say, there's Handing candy out for you. Uh, so yeah. there is a challenge too, and, but you figure it out. You know? So I figured out, you know what? I'm just going to contact an orphanage and the kindergartens and say, look, I'm not a strange guy. I know I'm a foreigner, but th this is what I'm doing. It's, so it's a puja and it's a healing act. Is it okay if I just bring over a whole sack of uh, sweets and, and fruits and give it to the kids? Of course, they said yes. I mean, they were super happy that some somebody somebody buys right. candies and brings stuff. So it's also physical act. Yes, um, just answering. Yeah. Your so once, so yeah. So once you do the pujas, in my case, you're right. I didn't have physical ones, but I had five full moon uh, ceremonies, uh, mm -hmm. several six Fridays, seven Sundays, uh, yep. several Tuesdays. So yep. mine would go on for about five or six months, um, yes. every week an activity One. chant, prayer, uh, meditation to do with intention. And then after you finish your pujas, mm -hmm. you have cleared or balanced the energy that was blocked or imbalanced that showed correct. up in the reading. Correct. Correct. Yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then things should start to feel different or flow different. Should sure, yes, but again, simple, simple answer to what you just said or, or comment. If you are an alcoholic and you continue drinking, uh, continue drinking, you can make as many pujas as you want. Nothing's going to change, you know. So yeah. you gotta, the pujas are here to help you energetically, but then if there there are acts that you need to do, well, you got to do them too. That's very important. Yeah. Yes. 
Well, so how often would you recommend a person get a, a palm leaf reading? It's a, Is it a once in a lifetime thing. thing? For many people, it's once in a lifetime, but in Southern India, it's very much part of culture. So people get readings throughout their lives. Um, they usually would get a chapter reading because a, 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 one of these leaves has 12 chapters, 14 chapters, depending on how you um, categorize them. And for money reasons, many times, and also urgency reasons, they would just go for one chapter, like the marriage chapter, or relationship chapter, or career chapter. And then once they have more money or get older, so to a younger person, career is more important than having kids because it's down the line. So they would get the career chapter first and then they would get the kid chapter and so I forth. See. But what we do, we give the whole life reading because uh, you know you get up in the morning to get a reading done and you want to do these little chapters, you want to get the whole thing. And uh, of course things change, like you change as a human change. Hopefully you get better as a human and the energies change. So then after a couple of years, because we're many, many also to get their second and now we'll have people get the third reading and they can see the change of trajectory um, improvements, hopefully improvements, because um, they need to do the work uh, too to see improvements. Yeah. Uh, yes. Well, I, I mean, I will say I found the whole process to be fascinating. One of my most favorite parts about the reading, I guess, because of what I do and who I am spiritually, mm -hmm. um, or you know, my work on myself spiritually, was the information about you know my chakras opening and. Um, very much so nice. um, the experience of, you know, what I could expect with all that, that was very exciting for me. I don't know. Does that come through in a lot of people's readings? Uh, that like their chakras will open? No, actually not. It's, it's no. unique to you. Mm -hmm. So well, I didn't know if that was part of like, you know, lucky gemstones no, no, the, and then no, no, the here's your chakras gemstones, that are open. The, the lucky gemstones, everyone gets to hear the lucky days of the week and the lucky days of the month. That's things that everyone gets to hear, but how many energetic dots you have, who knows? You know, usually it's three. If you're a younger person, it's two, the third one developing. But if you're uh, more, I mean, some people have a fourth one. We had one person with ah. five energetic dots. Mm. Um, some people are being told that they're, all their seven chakras will be open by a certain time. Some people, some people hear one chakra will open. Some people don't even hear anything about chakras because their their souls are so young that they gotta focus on different things. Um, some people get like half an hour, like a lot of information when it comes to Ayurvedic uh, diets. You know what they need to eat and not eat, and this and that, the other. And some people get nothing, like zero, when it comes to food, what they should and should not eat. So the the reading is very very individualized. What the person needs from that day's point of view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is good to know. The other thing good to know, you know, in my case, I brought up the vaccine because mm -hmm. that's what's current right now, but this isn't the kind of reading that a person would ask questions like that because that information wasn't, as you said, put on okay. the, yes. you know, on the palm leaf 3000 years ago because they weren't yes. dealing with this particular issue. Right. Yes. Well, I guess, well, I guess with the information with the Ayurvedic healing or foods and herbs and things, you know, there's, those are still generalized, but I think still specific to a person, what they're dealing with. Like, for example, with yes. me, it was, here's, here's some digestive issues that might show up and here's things yes. that you can yeah. eat. I guess one question I would have just now thinking back into that is, you know, should you start doing those foods now or only when the time comes yeah. when they say you're going to have digestive issues, you know, because that was no. a little confusing. No. Do oh, now. No, no. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It doesn't have to be this very moment, but you need to think yeah, about, okay, this is going to happen. So I better start changing things now. So when they say yeah. you have mobility issues in 10 years from now, well, and they will say you should go for a walk an hour or two, because it happens also in meetings. They say you should go for a walk. Uh, well, don't wait until your hip needs to be replaced because that's too late. Right. You do something now. <laughs> it's just the reality of it. So, yes. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. It's good information. I mean, I was really pleased. I thought it was fascinating. And um, I think for myself personally, I would probably go through the pujas and maybe like what you did, give it a year or two and then do another reading just to kind of see what's changed or what's shifted. You know, yes. mm -hmm. that feels okay. like something I might be interested in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, um, it's, uh, they're 18 Maharishi. So in theory, you can have one leaf written by each one of them in theory, oh, wow. there are 18 saints, you know, 18 uh, great sages. And in yes. theory, if, if it works, why not? Maybe of 18. 
I do not know, but uh, you can you can test it. Yeah, I haven't tested it myself. Well, for people, who, yeah, people who are interested in reading, I do want to say because because you have to be careful just across the board. You know, obviously, yeah. I'm interviewing Dr. Hugh. I had this experience personally. I trust this institute. I trust Thank him. You. And I had a very good experience for myself. I would just say, if you're interested in doing something like this, you know, go with someone that you trust. And, you know, we have an option right here. Um, If you travel to India, be careful because very careful, you know, yeah, you don't know what you're getting. And yeah, yeah, right. And why waste your money or time? You know, it's always better to go with a resource that you have, um, you know, experience or, you know, a reference from, you know, and so I highly recommend um, Dr. Q and his work. Yeah. And are we doing a little discount for the listeners? Okay. And you'll get a discount if you put my name in, he's going to put that in soon. Your name, Leah, or or, um, the Modern Sage podcast, and we'll give you a hundred dollar discount as as my gift to Leah and her support saying thank you and and her audience for um, yeah helping spreading the word of this ancient and powerful wisdom. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. And somebody might hear a hundred dollar discount. Oh my God, it's thousands of dollars. No, it's normally 500 total, but with a yes. hundred, it'll be 400 and you pay uh, a 100, little bit at the beginning, yeah, so a hundred at the beginning. To start the surge, and then the rest, yeah. like in your case, 300, otherwise 400. Yes. Correct. Mm-hmm. And right. For each and step, so like there is money back guarantee too, for each step. Right. So if they if don't, you find don't find your bundle, bundle you'll get the money get back. hundred right. dollars back. And if you're unhappy with the reading or there is no matching, which hasn't happened, but it could theoretically happen that there is no matching despite us finding a bundle, then you get your uh, $300 back too. So that will be your yeah. matching and reading money. Mm-hmm. So that's a great thing. And, um, you know, it's so detailed. We spent almost four hours. I think it's supposed to be more like three, but three or four hours in the reading and the matching yes. and the reading. So yes. this is an investment that a person is, you know, um, paying into and it's the value is there. I just want to say to people, you know, it's definitely a valuable experience and know that if you're interested in doing this, this isn't something you just decide on Tuesday that you want to do and have your reading on Wednesday or even next week. No. Yeah. You have to, you know, you have to get the ink and you have to do your thumbprint and then you upload it. And then I think in my case, it was six or eight weeks before they found the bundle. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we scheduled the reading for the next week. So it could take a couple of months or more to finish the process. Right. So if this is something you're interested in, go ahead and start saving your money or go ahead and put the, you know, deposit on the bundle and, you know, take the steps because um, you don't want to wait and just make a last minute decision because you won't get the reading. It will take time. Absolutely. You're right. It takes a few months, actually, from the moment you submit your impression until you have the reading scheduled or the actual reading three months for sure. On average. Yeah. Yeah. On a personal note, how did you choose the people that would be working for the Institute? How did you choose the uh, the readers that had the most integrity? I met them, you know, because so in India, I'm, I'm, I'm Persian. So it's very similar to some extent, you know, Persian, how they are and function and how Indians are. It's not losing your face that can play for you, to your advantage. So if a reader brings on board a new reader or a new interpreter, then he puts, and it's only men, hence I say he and not, uh, not she, he would uh, put his um, good name on the line. And that's the worst thing that can happen to an Indian, the worst. Like if he brings someone and that someone is not the same standard as he is, like when it comes to integrity and knowledge. So uh, that works. That works. Do you, do you understand? So uh, I know yes. a couple. So over, over time, of course, because I spent quite some time in India, of course, I have. And, and I personally am an, an India fan, but I know that many people will never travel to India. And that's the reason why we then created this online, uh, as otherwise people will need to fly with me to India and spend some time in India because it's a lengthy process. You cannot just show up in the next day of a reading. Uh, and so when I realized after my reading, when I was spreading the word about this, I said, oh my gosh, this is a phenomenal uh, thing. People wanted to get a reading done too. And then I realized nobody, I mean, almost no one said, sure, let's go to India because it's either too far, you know, long right. flight, inoculation, a visa, maybe, I don't know, uh, uh, food's too spicy or whatever. So they said, no, I won't do it. And that's how I thought maybe we can do this online. And then uh, I talked to the reader, he gave me the reading and, and said, sure, it was Skype, you know, uh, all, seven, eight years ago. Um, and then that's how the whole thing evolved. So it's the exact same process, exact the same as if you were sitting, as if you were sitting across from him in, in, in the office in India. And uh, it's just more comfortable. 
because you, wherever you are in your air conditioned room, sipping a cup of tea or coffee and have a reading done instead of sitting across from a reader and the interpreter, because the reader usually doesn't speak English, so you need to find an interpreter too, who interprets Tamil to English or rather English. And that's the reason why we have a, we have a Western moderator. So there are three people who help you understand the interpretation of the Tamil to English, because in an accent is uh, hard for some people to understand. And even if you do understand what uh, the in an accent, you might not understand the reading or the meaning of it. And that's the reason why I train moderators so they can explain to the seeker, whoever gets the reading done, look, this is what it actually means. And they're like, oh, now I understand. Or explain the pujas afterwards, how to do it and correctly do it and so forth. So there's a lot of, of um, work involved, really a lot. We'll put a lot, a lot of work into making this as professional yeah. as possible and a better experience than the real one sitting there because uh, I know it's a small room. They use a lot of incense. It's hot as hell. You sweat and uh, you got to scribble things on a piece of paper. And to me, having had cancer and my, I'm very sensitive to scent and, and incense is not for me at all. And I was struggling like the three hours just um, and the mosquitoes and all the rest of it. So right. uh, either it's air conditioned from home or it's heated from home. So it doesn't matter when. And it's Monday through Sunday as, as to make it as, as easy as possible for people. And there's only a few days where we cannot do it because of the important holidays in India and in the West, like Diwali, which is the Christmas yeah. of the Hindus. The, there won't be any readings. It's just too noisy. Just yeah. Yeah. So you can do it from the comfort in your home, unless there's a, a holiday. And also when you're finished, you get a recording of yes. the reading that includes the chat thread and you get a breakdown of the pujas and you have everything that you need. So you can go back on your own time. And I can't wait to watch my recording again and just, you know, listen and experience it again, because it was really, well, first it was really early in the morning, but secondly, it was really impactful. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I know for East Coast, East Coast people, it's 6 45 a.m. New York time. It's just because of time zone difference to India. And if you're on the West Coast, yeah. it would be 9 45 p.m. West Coast time. And uh, for New Zealanders and, and, and Aussies, and that's much easier because they're ahead of us, ahead of India. And Europeans is also not so hard. But hard would be East Coast people or even Central because they've got to get up an hour before that, 5 45 a.m. And, and uh, California, so it will be a late night reading. It just is, man. It's once. In a lifetime, you've got to either get up a little earlier or stay up a little later as opposed to having to fly there, do all that. So it's that's just right, you know, right. It's totally worth it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you, Dr. Q, for bringing thank this you, to uh, the people and for explaining it and uh, your heart behind it. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. And for everyone watching, don't forget, if you want to have a reading, you can use Leah or the Modern Sage uh, podcast in your notes. And if you have any questions personally, I'd be happy to answer them. And I'm sure Dr. Q would too. All of his information sure. will be in the show notes. Thank you. All right. Yeah. We'll talk to you soon, Dr. Q. Thank you, madam.